Well, hello. Got an interesting topic today. I've got a I've got an email here from someone by the name of we're going to call him Bill, okay. talking about guilt. Um, and he he asked me to do a certain something here, and I want to talk about this. And then we're going to get into the details about what the causes are of of all of this and what we can really do about it. But let me let me let me read the email to you first. It says, "Hello, Gary. Firstly." Much gratitude to you, sir, for all your sharings. Thank you. Okay. I write to you requesting help to address emotional pain, parentheses, guilt, when it comes to my father. He makes me feel guilty. Even though I am trying hard to be there for him, up to my abilities, all I'd look to do is do it with love, and I haven't heard a word of gratitude, but just asking more of me. I request you kneeling down, please. Can you please ask the unseen therapist to clear this guilt and fear? Please, I will be utterly grateful. Please, sir. Bill. Well, let's talk about that for a little bit. The concept that Bill apparently has is that I, because I have experience and skills with the unseen therapist can somehow kneel down in front of unseen therapist in some presumably religious posture and say something like dear unseen therapist or dear God, you know, please fix my father. All right. So that I don't have to have all this guilt and everything else. And, and and while that sort of prayer, if you will, may have some results here and there over time, uh, it's hardly considered reliable. And that's because we're not getting down. We're not requesting through prayer relief on the real issue. And that's what's going to be important for this. So stay with me, you know, throughout this this exploration here. Okay. Now let's take this apart for a moment. Bill is feeling guilty because of the father's behavior, all right? Well, what we want to get to is a point where Bill doesn't feel guilty about father's behavior. Father's behavior can be whatever it's going to be. And yes, that may contribute to Bill's guilt, but Bill's guilt is an inside job. And what I mean by that is properly understood with the unseen therapist and op optimal EFT, we want to get to the point where we recognize it's not what happens that is the real issue. It's not that the father is somehow criticizing, belittling, or acting in unloving manners. It's Bill's response to that. If Bill just sat back and said, well, that's just, that's just dad. He's going through his thing again. Is Bill going to feel guilt? No. But somehow or other, father's... Father's material, father's behavior, his words, actions, and so on, triggers something in Bill. Bill feels guilty. Now, he doesn't. Bill doesn't tell us in this in this email uh, what all the details are in his life and so on. So I have to fill in a few blanks here. But I'm doing this just to make a point. The likelihood is, because I've seen this many times is that in Bill's background, and likely contributed to in major ways by his father, has felt rejection, or has felt guilt over and over and over and over again. He's been told he's not doing things right. What's wrong with you? Uh, the child, Bill, begins to realize or develop beliefs, I'm not good enough. How many of us have that? Okay. <laughs> I'm, the, I'm not good enough. I don't count. Uh, I'm not lovable. There's something wrong with me. Things like that. And then when you do things and you're criticized for them, you get guilt, 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 guilt. And until that gets resolved, as it occurs and you grow up, you get more and more and more of it and you feel guilty, guilty, guilty. And here comes your father criticizing you. And your father has never been able to give you love, Bill. All right. And I'm making some of this up just to, to make the point. 
So here you are with unresolved response to your father's behavior. You've never resolved it. Ooh, here it is. Here it is again. It'll happen again. It'll happen again. And what we tend to think is we need to change the father in order for me to feel, me, Bill, to feel better. And I'm suggesting not necessarily so. <laughs> what we do, if this is done properly, and I can't do the whole thing here in this short video, but I'm going to give you the I idea of this. If we start looking at the supposed, the supposed source of this guilt, the father's behavior, and the likelihood is very high, because I've seen this so often, that the father has, does all this criticism and behaviors because he has unrest within himself that is not resolved. And what happens, people who have this, and most of us have it to some degree, apparently father has it to an, an extra degree, is we can either, we can either resolve this or we can project it outward. We have to do something with it. So we either resolve it so we get peace with it. This is father now. Or father is going to project it out. He's going to criticize somebody. And, and unfortunately, children, as it turns out, you know, are, are great targets for this. They don't talk back. And, and many parents just don't realize the damage they're doing. All they do know is they can criticize out and, and that makes them feel better, at least for now. But here it is again tomorrow and the next day. You don't really resolve it. So we could work with the father, of course, if the father was willing. And we could start resolving a, a lot there so the father's behavior even changes. But it's Bill that's writing. How? How can we now shift Bill's response to uh oh, oh yeah, I feel so guilty. Yeah, I did it again. Uh, yeah, yeah, there's something wrong with me. Uh, to well, that's just that's just that's just dad. He's <sighs> got his stuff, okay. Much different. One one way has a lot of peace in it, the other is oh, I'm guilty, I'm guilty, I'm guilty. So one way, a standard way, something that I use a lot in a case like this, is we start to look at the father. Now Again, Bill didn't tell me, you know, what his father's background is in this email. But we would explore that. Why would he behave that way? And oftentimes I'll ask this question of Bill or whomever I'm working with on this issue. I say, well, Bill, tell me, as far as you know, would I be correct in assuming that one of your father's biggest needs is love? And almost always, like I'll tell you, almost always, I get a, oh, yeah, yeah. Well, why would that be? Well, he was abused. He was, he was rejected. He was, the, you know, his, his father was a very straight-laced guy, and his mother didn't pay attention to him, and whatever. Lots of, lots of things. But typically, the bills of this world, or the Janets of this world, if it's a lady, know something about the critical parent or even abusive parent and recognize what they really need is love. And there's not a big step from there in a reframing session, a reframing point of view, where we can say, ah, this issue really isn't mine, Bill's. It's my father's issue. He is doing the best he can given his own unrest and all of that. I happen to be a target for it. But, you know, uh, that's just dad. Now, there's one thing to discuss it like you and I just did right now. And many people say, okay, yeah, I can discuss that. And I can, in my head, it, it makes sense. But, you know, Bill, until we do something really well with this with Unseen Therapist, doesn't own it. It doesn't really land. It's not really integrated. It's just sort of an academic thing. Oh, well, that's dad. But inside, it still triggers all these guilty responses. But when we start addressing this and using unseen therapists in a professional, quality, well-trained way, that starts to shift from 
oh, it's in my head, I understand it, to owning it, owning it. And now peace, true peace begins to shift within the system when we do that. And now when Father goes through his tirades, ah, oh, we have less reaction. Then we do it again, we do it again with unseen therapists. Ah, oh, we have less reaction, we have less reaction. We'll go back to specific events in, in Bill's lifetime where father was ridiculing him or criticizing him in some way. And we go back to the emotional response and start dealing with this with unseen therapists. And all of a sudden it's, oh, oh, there's a relaxation about it. No longer is it academic. You own it. You own it. And now, properly done, Bill's father's behavior no longer has to affect Bill. Sits back, let father be what father's going to be. And chances are, as Bill starts to create more peace in his system about these various things, interesting thing happened, I've seen it, seen it a lot, is that Bill will begin to radiate this peace. He responds to his father differently. He allows his father just to go do his thing. And it just sort of bounces off of Bill, and Bill reacts in a more loving, more peaceful way, because that's what's within now. And when he does that, the father picks it up. He gets it at some level. This is why the unseen therapist can do so much good for so many places and so, so expand far beyond what you think you're working on. Okay. But now father can start to go, oh, and he begins to even evaluate at a subconscious level his own behavior. Why am I doing this? Why am I doing this? Okay. Now he's more open to be, have the same kind of relief going on for him. That's the kind of thing uh, for, for all the bills in the world and all the guilts the, that we tend to collect over time. When we can create this kind of relief, ah. Uh, that's real peace. That's real peace. And our whole world just shifts differently when that happens. So anyway, thanks for listening in. Um, we will uh, see you next time.